Praise ye the Lord. Praise God in his sanctuary. Praise him in the firmament of his power. Praise him for his mighty acts. Praise him according to his excellent greatness. Praise him with the sound of the trumpet. Praise him with the sultry and harp. Praise him with the timbrel and dance. Praise him with string instruments and organs. Praise him upon the loud cymbals. Praise him upon the high sounding cymbals. to be here today. I won't keep you long. If you would turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 4, I want to read just a few verses. I want to start at verse 32. And I'm reading from the King James Version. And it reads, And when Elisha was come into the house, behold, the child was dead and laid upon his bed. He went in therefore and shut the door upon them twain and prayed unto the Lord. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon yeah, yeah, his yeah, mouth, yeah, yeah, yeah. and his eyes upon his eyes, yeah. and his hands upon his yeah, hands. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he stretched himself upon the child, and the flesh of the child waxed warm. Then he returned and walked in the house to and fro, and went up and stretched himself upon him, and the child sneezed seven times. And the child opened his eyes, and he called Gehazi and said, Call this Shunammite. So he called her, and when she was come in unto him, he said, Take up thy son. Then she went in and fell at his feet, and bowed herself to the ground, and took up her son and went out. For just a few moments, I want to talk about no more humiliation. Right. No more humiliation. Amen. Father God, we thank you for this opportunity. We thank you for this time. Lord God, I need you right now, Father God, that the word that's proceeding seeds out of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in your sight Lord God so that you may be glorified the saints would be edified some sinner might be sanctified and the devil would be horrified in the name of Jesus we pray amen no more humiliation I don't know who this is for I don't know I don't know it might just be for two of you in the room but somebody in this room has come against closed door after closed door no after no loan officer after loan officer and they keep saying no your credit is not good enough you keep getting embarrassment after embarrassment humiliation after humiliation but God sent me here to tell you you are in a season of no more humiliation no more humiliation so the past of today, the passage that we've been looking at all day of this Shunammite woman sits in between two stories, two miraculous stories. What yeah. happened before Elisha meets the Shunammite woman, yeah. he runs into a widow. The Bible calls her a certain woman, and she was the widow of one of the sons of the prophets that uh, served Elisha, and he has died, and now the creditors are after her because of his death. <laughs> And, and the creditors, they're not, uh, 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 they're not at her job no more. They stop calling her phone. They stop texting. They are at her front door. All right. All right. They come to repossess not the house, not, not, not uh, her car, but they come to take her children. And she goes to the man of God, and he gives her instructions. Somebody say instructions. instructions. He doesn't tell her to give me uh, money, and it, you're going to be blessed. He doesn't uh, tell her to pay for this shawl, this prayer shawl, and you will be blessed. He gives her instructions on how she can bless herself. Uh -huh. And he tells her to go home and uh, ask all your neighbors, ask all your friends, ask 4,000 of your Facebook friends for some vessels. Uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. uh -huh. Because she had told them all I had was uh, some oil and uh, one pot of oil. And, uh, I don't have much, but I have a little bit. And so uh, he's telling her, go 
and, and borrow all kinds of vessels from everybody. And when you get all you can, go into your house and shut the door. Somebody say, shut the door. Shut the door. And uh, when you shut the door, start pouring the oil. Right. Until the last vessel is full. And, and she did that and she kept pouring and she kept pouring. Every time a new vessel would come, she would pour. Every time a new vessel, and she would pour until the last vessel was full. Yes. She goes back to the man of God and he simply tells her, now go sell that oil. Uh -huh. Pay off your debt. Pay it off. Pay it off. And live off That's the rest. Good. I don't know how many more years that she lived, but it was enough provision for her and her sons to live off the rest. I don't know who that's for, but God says that I'm going to pay off some miraculous debt in your life. This is your season of no more humiliation. Ah, and then after he meets the Shunammite woman, after uh, Elisha goes to a place called Gilgal, and in Gilgal, there was this famine. And the Bible says that the prophets were sitting at his feet. It's possible that he may have been teaching. I don't know. But uh, he noticed that while he was there, they were sitting at his feet. He noticed they were hungry. And he told his servant to go make a meal, a, a, a pot of, of stew. And so uh, the, the, the man did it. The herbs that he got turned out to be poisonous. And the prophets tell Elisha, we can't eat this. This is poisonous. And right in the middle of his teaching, right in the middle of the sermon, he picked up some meal, dropped it in a pot, and it turned into edible food. Uh -huh. I don't know who that is for, but God is saying, I'm going to do a quick change. And what the devil meant for evil, I'm going to turn it around for your good. It's going to happen suddenly. Somebody say, no more. No more. Humiliation. Humiliation. We're right here in two between two seasons of miraculous provision. Anybody in between two seasons? You've seen God do it before. And you're waiting on him to do it again. And you're not where you used to be, but you're not where you're going to be. You're not where you were, uh, but you're not where you're supposed to be just yet. You're in between two seasons. And God sent me here to tell you no more humiliation. Ah. Uh, in this particular passage, if you look at it, I want to tell you three, three, three things on how to be in your season of no more humiliation. Uh, verse 33 says that Elisha, he shut the door and he uh, closed the door and prayed unto the Lord. So the first thing you have to do is you got to pray. Simple, right? You have to have a active, an active prayer life. But the Bible says he shut the door. That's significant because he told the, the widow woman to shut the door. Why would Elisha shut the door? Well, my Bible says in Matthew chapter 6, when you do a service, because Elisha's about to do a service, when you do a service, uh, shut the door because what you do in private, God will reward you in public. And if you uh, uh, fast forward into that same passage, when, when you pray, the Bible says, go into your secret closet and shut the door and pray unto the Father. And the Father who sees in secret will reward you in public, will reward you in open. So somebody in this room has been praying in private, has been fasting in private, has been waiting on God to do something, and he's about to bless you in public. Somebody say, no more humiliation. You got to pray. You got to have an after prayer life. Uh, prayer is communication with God. Yeah. Communication with God. When you when you communicate with God, you're talking to Him and He's talking to you. And so you are not just communicating, but you're communing with God. Communing with God. And when you when you commune with God, you change your community. All right, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. So when you pray, prayer is your GPS track to change your community. When you pray, you are inviting God into your atmosphere. When you pray, you're inviting angels into your atmosphere. And wherever God is, the devil can't be in the same place. Wherever angels are, demons can't be in the same place. So you got to change your atmosphere by having an active prayer life. And your prayer life has to be powerful, it has to be penitent, and it has to be persistent. See, it's time out for patty cat prayer. We thank you for this and all. It's time to go to war in your past. You have to have a powerful prayer life. Then your prayers have to be penitent. You have to repent from your sins. Lord, I did it. I'm sorry. Help me not to do it again. Then they've got to be persistent because persistence breaks resistance. You can't just pray on Sunday morning. Go ahead. You got to have an act. If Muslims pray three 
time of day. All right, come on, speak, uh, speak. We ought to pray at least. At least. Uh, 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 at least. Prayer should not be cute, traditional, or religious. Because prayer is our connection to the Father. That's right. Prayer has to be powerful, it has to be penitent, and it has to be persistent. Your prayer has to be so powerful, it has to be like what Moses and Aaron did. When Moses and Aaron prayed, it stopped the plague. <laughs> when Paul and Silas prayed, it got worse. When Hannah prayed, the priest thought she was drunk. And when Jesus prayed in the Garden of Gethsemane, the sweat turned into sweat drops of blood. We gotta have an active prayer. Number two, you have to get in position. Get in position. It says, uh, uh. Uh, and he went up and lay upon the child. Yeah. Lay upon the child. You have to get into position. He laid prostrate. Yeah. He laid down. Yeah, yeah. Uh, it was a sign of humility. Uh -huh. He was in a horizontal position of humility. And I've come to realize humility and humiliation come from the same root word, which means to debase, degrade, and bring low. Right, right, right. And some of us ought to go low yeah, yeah, before yeah, yeah. we're brought low. Yeah. <laughs> The Bible says God opposes the prayer, but he has grace to the almost some of us need to come down a notch. Can't go nowhere without your armor bearers. Can't go nowhere unless you have the right outfit. Can't go nowhere unless there's a whole big old prayer. Some of us need to be brought low. Because when you're brought low, when you go low, uh, it's a sign of submission, which is a sign of helplessness. Saying, I can't do this, God. I know only you can. But if you look at the text, you see it in verse 34. It says, and he went up and laid upon the child. He's laid down, but he's still laid upon. Uh, he's low, but he's still high. He's down, but he's still up. He's laying down, but he's still on top of that dead situation. You may be brought low, but I come here to tell you, you're still on top of your dead situation. You're still on top of that dead problem. You're still on top of your sickness. You're still on top of that closed door. You're still on top of your problem. Under God, but on top of the problem. Low, but still high. When he laid on, on, on the boy, it was a transfer. It was a, 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 a transfer, yeah, yeah, yeah. a transmission break it, break it of power. Teach. Yes. And you can't transmit anything out of you mm -hmm. unless you're broken. That's right. Humility is a sign of brokenness. Yes. You can't eat nothing and it, until it is broken. When you break bread, you're breaking it into pieces yes. so that it can transfer to more than just you. All right. So when God humbles you, he's breaking you so that the power that he's put in you can transfer to other people. The sacrifices of God are a broken spirit, a broken and a contrite heart. Oh God, you will not despise. Humility equals brokenness. So number one. To get out of here, the season of uh, humiliation, you have to pray. Right. Number two, you have got to get into position. Right. And number three, as I go to my seat, you got to stretch. All right. All right. All right. And he went up and lay upon the child and put his mouth upon his mouth and his eyes upon his eyes and his hands upon his hands. And he stretched himself upon the child and the flesh of the child waxed warm. You go uh, fast forward to verse 35. Uh, it says that he returned and walked to the house to and fro and went up and stretched himself upon him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got to stretch. There are benefits to stretching. Uh, 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 to stretch means to reach and to increase and to intensify and to press. But the benefits of stretching is uh, improved performance, de decreased risk of injury. It gives joints full range of motion, enabling uh, the muscles to work effectively and an increase of blood flow. Yes, yes. Stretching is one of the first things you do when you get up in the morning. Right. Or when you've been sitting for a long time. Yes, yes. Uh, uh, so when Elisha stretched before the boy woke up, he's saying, I, you may not 
be awake yet, but I'm going to stretch like you are. We have got to stretch our faith before the blessing comes. You've got to see it before you see it. So you can get to it. But the Bible says that he stretched not once, but twice. I told you he transferred. He became a transfer agent. But it wasn't until he stretched the second time that the shift came. The first time he stretched on the boy, the boy waxed warm. <laughs> The ministry started. The business got a few customers. The church had a few more members. It's just waxing warm. But it's not until the second stretch that the ship pumps. The ship doesn't happen until you choose not to give up. The baby. Uh, the situation isn't quite alive yet, but I refuse to give up. I refuse to take no for an answer. The Bible says, let us not be weary in well-doing, for in due season we shall reap if we faint not. Don't stop until the dead situation comes back. Friday. And it looked like I had been fired. Yeah. Okay. Uh, 
um, uh, my manager tried all week to get it fixed, all week long. And it's an IT company, so you would think IT would be able to fix it. All week long, so people thought I had lost my job. Wow. They were emailing everybody, hey, is Mama still an employee here? Oh, wow. Is the wow. team still work here? And then I think, yeah, she got it, she got right. And, and, and even my manager was like, can you still get in the building? Mm. He thought HR had let me, let me go. And it was humiliating. Mm. It was quite ugly mm. to be in this situation. But as I was driving on my way here, I got a text message from my manager. It said, the problem has been fixed. You are no longer locked out. I don't know who that's for, but God sent me here to tell you you're not locked out of your life. Today is your day. Thank <laughs> you.